Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be on the International uh, Institute for International and European Affairs that I have been in contact, I think, in uh, the past years. And I'm on the board in Berlin on the Similia Institute, uh, Institute for Europäische Politik, uh, being born out of the European movement 50 years ago and uh, in close relationship to the foreign ministry and uh, serving as a platform like you do for all sorts of debates uh, with different stakeholders. Yeah, um, um, in fact, um, I took over the China delegation this year um, and this uh, legislature because I think that Europe and China can do a, a, a lot together. There is a huge potential of cooperation, especially on the way to sustainable development, so whether it's climate change or resources efficiency, energy efficiency. And when I was chair of the Environment Committee, I led the Parliament delegation to Copenhagen Climate Conference, and I shared the same frustration than uh, all the others, that the big hope to have a climate deal was not possible because uh, on the one hand the US, one has to say it, but on the other hand as well China have not been prepared and not ready to make a deal. And then um, on the way to Paris where I was as well with the parliament delegation, uh, you saw the change uh, that uh, China by many uh, reasons uh, as well came forward to uh, uh, then uh, be uh, not uh, obstructive, but be very constructive uh, to make the Paris deal. Now, I think this is uh, just uh, rhetoric. You know that um, you and China are for 40 years uh, having this uh, diplomatic relationship uh, and having uh, some 60 different dialogues. Uh, of course, trade is in the very focus of our relationship, uh, but it... Uh, uh, as well enlarged to a high-level strategic dialogue on all political issues around the world and not to forget about the people-to-people -people dialogue. And this uh, lunch debate is uh, timely because yesterday and today is the EU-China summit in Beijing. Uh, we see what, what comes out. Um, and uh, Madame Mogherini, a few weeks ago, has presented elements of a new EU-China strategy we discussed it uh, in Strasbourg uh, last week, and um, hopefully we get, let's say, one voice uh, to uh, <coughs> that comprehensive, uh, let's say, uh, uh, partnership with uh, China. Now, trade is uh, at the focus. Uh, it has uh, 20 years ago there was hardly trade, and today we have this uh, 460. Uh, um, 5 billion euros in trade uh, uh, in 2014 alone uh, and investments are going up uh, quite quickly. Now um, I should mention that um, there is very conflicts and you know about the market economy status um, that is in question. Uh, the parliament had a clear vote to say there is no automatic um, decision on this. Uh, we need a package of a, a fair trade deal and uh, trade is completely unbalanced between China and the EU and um, therefore um, the, the Commission will come up uh, in summer with a proposal uh, and uh, what our trade defense instruments could be. Now investment is the next big uh, issue. Uh, European companies have invested a lot in China and China is now coming on the European market. So if you could see they are buying year by year Syngenta in Switzerland, Pirelli in Italy, yeah, power station in Portugal, train lines in Hungary. Um, and then came in Germany to the most sophisticated robotic uh, company, KUKA. If you go to Ford or Volkswagen, KUKA has the robots, uh, the, the robots to, to make, uh, let's say, uh, uh, all machines and cars. And suddenly there was a debate whether we want uh, them to buy it. And in fact, uh, in our external trade uh, acts, uh, we have uh, these safeguards um, that for security reasons in the military area, you don't allow foreign investments. And maybe we have to rethink again uh, what our, are our strategic interests, because at the end, the Chinese companies are very often not private, but they are state-owned companies with state-owned subventions. And there is not a fair uh, thing. No? 
Uh, Chinese markets are by and large closed for European companies, while European markets are really widely open for Chinese. Uh, it's a big debate. It is not. Uh, let's say it's just beginning. Uh, I don't think that we should be protectionist because at the end Europe exports more than it imports um, to the world. So the EU was always a more open door and a liberal uh, trader and other protectionist. <coughs> But if you look on the U.S., they are much harder in, uh, uh, let's say, saying no to foreign investments than the EU ever has done. I don't think we even have a policy on this. Now, um, I think that the One Belt, One Road initiative as the Juncker plan uh, are two portfolios where investments could uh, take place. Now, our topic is more than the um, sustainable development Uh, as I told you, Paris was a culminating point where um, EU and uh, China uh, really got together uh, with others, uh, but uh, really made that uh, historic deal to uh, um, preserve the atmosphere. Uh, as one has done 25 years ago in uh, Montreal to preserve the ozone layer. And as you could see, it is working. Yeah, It is successful. And I think we have the possibility to stabilize uh, global warming if everybody does uh, uh, its homework. Now, we have an EU-China energy roadmap um, just concluded a few days ago on the uh, uh, G20 uh, summit uh, between the EU and China. We have a close cooperation on emission trading, an organization partnership and an innovation cooperation. Now, if we go into the issues, um, it is um, all the elements that uh, are available um, to promote energy efficiency, uh, renewable energies, uh, to establish carbon markets, um, to have a, a climate-related research, uh, go to overall low-carbon economy, and um, the urbanization as well with the migration from uh, the, land, uh, the rural areas to the cities, and um, the uh, um, uh, technologies that we need. Now, you could see that uh, China has a huge potential. Um, it is already in 2015 investing more in renewables than the EU and, uh, China and the US together. If you see on the right side, uh, 199 gigawatts, whereas uh, the United States uh, is on 122 and Europe is then behind. Um, so the new five-year plan, uh, which uh, is very welcomed in, in this regard, uh, speaks about eco-civilization. It's a, a nice word that they have found, eco-civilization. And uh, the prediction is that they go to 800,000 gigawatt with uh, a new grid system and um, let's say a completely new uh, energy uh, uh, pattern. As I told you, um, on the 29th of June, um, at the sideline of the G20 energy minister meeting in Beijing, EU and China adopted an energy road map. Um, we uh, want to understand each other, have mutual trust um, on, in the energy cooperation, uh, so on the market development, on the regulation framework, and uh, then uh, on this basis improve trade and uh, investment uh, conditions in the energy sector and transforming the energy system in a climate resilient um, uh, system. Um, I think uh, that uh, in uh, this large area of renewable energies, um, and uh, smart grids, as I mentioned, there are a lot of experiences that uh, European companies could um, fit in. So China goes nuclear as well. It's not only renewable and uh, nuclear safety. We have the Europe, Eurotone Treaty where nuclear safety is a common policy and it is useful to speak with them about this issue as well. Germany, as you know, has decided to step out of nuclear. Yes. We are doing it. You never decided to step in, so you have not uh, the trouble mm -hmm. with nuclear waste and uh, 
nuclear safety, at least not uh, at home, maybe with your neighbor. And uh, uh, in this regard, of course, um, we have as well to look about standards for consumer goods, um, as to speak about um, um, eco-design. Now, uh, energy is the one thing, resources is the other uh, uh, issue, resources efficiency. Uh, China was really uh, pushing up uh, the prices for all sorts of resources in the last 10, 15 years. And uh, suddenly you could see that there is a transition. A transition from uh, low-cost mass production to higher quality uh, products and consumption. And uh, I was uh, with the parliament uh, a few weeks uh, ago in Namibia, it's only one country, <laughs> that uh, is heavily dependent on uh, natural resources and where Chinese companies are heavily investing, like in all Africa, and they are complaining about the price uh, fall of uh, uh, res uh, raw materials. Uh, and I told them, uh, look, that will not uh, change anymore because uh, we are in a new area of uh, technological re revolution where digital uh, technologies are helping us to be most efficient and where China and uh, then others will transform from the former uh, economic model to the new economic model. So I, I don't think the run on raw materials and on energy could be more relaxed um, if they do it what they uh, are talking in the five-year plan. Yeah, circular economy... I witnessed myself in Tianjin uh, how a whole new uh, city uh, complex is transformed into a circular economy city with uh, water recycling, with waste uh, management and uh, high standards for buildings. Um, that is uh, certainly a good thing to, to uh, follow. Now, we are cooperating since uh, some years uh, on the emission trading system. The EU was the first one to uh, go for a carbon market. Uh, yeah, that was an idea coming from the US, but then later it was most uh, contested in the US. <coughs> they did it uh, 25 years with SO2, with uh, uh, SO2, the emissions uh, successfully, but with CO2, they didn't want to do it anymore. So then uh, Europe uh, established the emission trading system and South Korea does it, um, California does it, Australia wanted to do it, and then the, the government change uh, abstained. But China has uh, seven pilot regions, as you could see. The most advanced is uh, Hubei and Guangdong. And uh, Guangdong uh, has 80 million uh, uh, inhabitants, it's as large as Germany. There's an uh, economic output a little bit like, uh, uh, not as much, but uh, uh, very prominent. And um, we are happy that they are testing the emission uh, trading system. And there we are very intense uh, uh, in cooperation with them. Um, uh, Chinese delegation, the experts, they come in September to Brussels and um, our environment committee goes there in November. Uh, we even have now taken another 10 million euros <coughs> to fund uh, their expertise and um, by next year uh, the pilot uh, projects uh, are intended to be a nationwide. Uh, carbon um, trading uh, market. Um, we uh, have to look uh, how we can make it compatible by the rules with the EU system and the end goal is of course to have a global carbon market. If you would have a price on carbon and reducing it year by year uh, you can come to the 2 degrees Celsius limit uh, to uh, yeah. Um, stabilize uh, global warming and we know that uh, the budget that we still have available is a thousand gigatons uh, by the scientific world uh, telling us a thousand gigatons are left 
for the time being, we have some 40 gigatons every year. So that is some 25 years. Then it should be zero if we want to have two degrees Celsius. And that um, is very ambitious. I, I think we, by business as usual, now are risking to fail it. But uh, if we establish a carbon market worldwide, uh, that could be done because the markets are following the price signals and then would quickly change um, yeah, um, in, in all the production uh, cycle. Now, um, as you know, China is uh, mobilizing more than 200 million people towards the cities, so they are really building new cities. Um, uh, outside Beijing, I, I saw a, a little city of 300,000, Qi County, uh, that uh, should have uh, 5 million people uh, in 2025. It has 300,000 today. <laughs> it's amazing when you see the plan in the uh, city hall, uh, how uh, the parks and the residential areas and the commercial areas and the sports and the scientific areas, how this is on the plan. Uh, and uh, I think it's most attractive um, to share experience by uh, Europeans because we are, our cities are a model of the world. Uh, urbanization in a European way is uh, probably the most sophisticated. And uh, we have the Guangzhou Bristol Partnership, uh, the Chengdu Bonn uh, Partnership, uh, and others. Uh, about 12 uh, Green City corporations are existing. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of challenges, but as well of opportunities in uh, our cooperation. Um, at the end, uh, I would say we need uh, to have uh, a legal framework. And uh, the EU is working with China on uh, standards, uh, on uh, best practices, um, on uh, market elements, um, yeah, on uh, standards for goods, because uh, export-import uh, needs, of course, uh, a level, uh, and therefore eco-design uh, is um, an uh, interesting area to uh, work together. We, of course, uh, have to look on our mutual interests. Uh, China has uh, this uh, uh, Made in China 2025. Uh, if you look behind, uh, it uh, looks like protecting China 2025. So uh, getting uh, scientific uh, excellence uh, from uh, Europe and other parts of the world and then back home, uh, let's say, creating national champions in the first place and going on the world market in the second place. So I think that there are negotiations necessary on a fair deal if we exchange uh, science and technology, whether that is open or whether it is uh, closed. And um, at the end, um, I think, and uh, therefore thank you for this topic, by all the conflicts we might have um, on market economy, on South China Sea conflicts or other areas, I think uh, climate change and sustainable development is an area of uh, mutual interest and of mutual benefits. And therefore, islands like uh, the EU uh, itself uh, should go for it and uh, should explore uh, the uh, possibilities uh, for Chinese to come here uh, and uh, our companies to go there. And I think that is a champ de travail. It's a uh, uh, terrain de uh, activities that uh, is very promising for the next years to come. Thank you very much. <coughs>